my daughter is going to winter ball. Now the dress is wrinkled because I've been working on it and I need to steam or press it. But I want to show you how I altered it for her. Um, I've altered many dresses. I usually blog about it, posting it, but um, I don't usually video it. So we got this dress at a secondhand store. And here's the price tag. It was actually donated in a lump sum of brand new dresses. It was 15. I saw some kind of flaw on it and asked them to mark it down. Um, I think the flaw was this because <laughs> many of them were actually samples from a, a dressmaker, a dress shop, and they had about 20 different dresses. Some of them had sample written on the back, some of them did not. If you can see, um, if I angle it, it had w stamped in white sample. I think it was either bleached or paint, but when I tried to scrape it, it didn't come off. So I just took a Sharpie pen and filled in the word sample. So this is a strapless dress. She's uncomfortable wearing a strapless dress. So she's going to wear a little uh, jacket, short, bolero, long sleeve thing because it is winter ball. It's going to be cold. Okay, and then the bodice in this was a little bit too big. And so, but looking at the front, you can see there's kind of a pattern going up the breast mark right there. And I ended up having to unstitch the pattern there and sew it in. But because the way the neckline goes, I couldn't just stitch it down the center. So, for example, I couldn't just take it in on both sides. At equally on the inside seam, which is normally what I would do and I have done many times. On the side, however, I actually did do that. You can see the pattern is sewn over and sewn in and it really doesn't matter because it's going to be under the arm and she is wearing that little jacket as well. But on the front, the pattern is very distinct going right up and I didn't want to offset the pattern by sewing all the way down the front. So what I did was um, I went inside and I'll show you this in a second but I'm just going to explain it. I went inside and then I I didn't take in on this side because the neckline goes up that way. I actually unpinned it, unpicked it and then I stitched in this more of this section. So you can see I just took it closer to the center on both sides so that I could take it in because it was really big here and you, when she would lean you could see down her dress. Um, and that's awkward if a date's taller than you, you can't bend at all because, or slouch because then they can see down your dress. So we didn't want that to happen so I needed to just take in the center section. So recap, I just unpicked this on the inside seam, left this seam the same but took it in on this side and I'll show you that in the center. Also what you can do is shorten the neck piece. So obviously I've it, taken it in a lot. Because this is going to be underneath a sweater anyway, she'll never wear it without that because she's just uncomfortable with strapless. So I just moved the buttons over and then I'm going to put a snap underneath there so that she can just snap it like that. Otherwise what I would have done is I would have um, cut it right here. Um, or just folded it in. I'll show you. Okay, so this is where the buttons were, would be. I would just take a, a pinch right there, stitch in how much I needed to, and then it would look like this. It would just be shorter. So I would take all that in by just folding it over, stitching it right there, and then it would shorten it so that the buttons would be in the center of the back. So now they're off to the side a little bit, but if I wanted to, that's how I would have done it. I would just take a pinch on both sides, stitch it as close to the seam as I could, and then make it like that on both sides, just taking in how much we need to on both sides to make it be in the center. Okay, now on formals, there usually is a liner so that the seams don't irritate them. And I did have to hem this. I, I hemmed it with a blind hand, hand stitched hem. But you can, you know, the original seam uh, hem was just machine, machine stitched. Sorry, I'm having a hard time speaking here. Okay, so this is the liner. 
makes it poof out the bottom. So you go in between the liners and sometimes it's stitched at the waist and you actually have to unstitch a portion of it. But this one I was lucky I didn't. It, the seams are completely separate. Uh, the, the, in, the liner and the dress themselves are separate. So this is the inside of the bodice right here. And you can see um, it's upside down now because I'm on the inside of the the liner. Okay, so this is the top of the bodice and I just unstitched the stitching right there and then on this side which is the center I took it in about half an inch, three quarters of an inch from where it was originally. Now on the other side which is to the um, armpit I didn't take it in at all. So what you do is you pin it on this, the same seam on one side and then just uh, extend it further on the side that you need it to be taken in. So I needed it to be more centered in the center and not taken in on the side because I wanted to make it tighter so she didn't when she bent it didn't show anything. So both sides of the center you can see um, and it's taken in so unpick it and then make the side that you want to stand out, pin it. So see one side's pinned on the nor and sewn where it was normally sewn and the other one is taken in more. Okay, then on the side seams, she also needed it taken in a little bit on the side seams. So on the side seam, I left the seam that was already there, which is stitching is right there, and I went in I did it, I would rather do too little than too much. So what I did here was I stitched it a half an inch and then I tried it on her and it wasn't enough. So then I went in another quarter of an inch or so or a third of an inch. So total I did maybe three quarters of an inch um, on the top because that's only what she needed. And then I got a little bit skinnier as she came down the bodice and then at the waist she needed more taken in so I went in and did a little bit more at the waist. Like I said, do this in increments because you don't want to have to, if you stitch too much and you unpick it, the seams, uh, the needle marks will still show and the seam mark will show on the satin or silk. So you want to make sure you take it in at little teeny bits at a time. And then try it on and take it in a little bit more. Now I have a blog, thesecretisgratitude.com, where I have shown altering many, many dresses from my girls. I have five daughters and I have done this on pretty much every one of their dresses because they all just fit differently and I want them to all have their own dresses. They've never shared dresses so um, I just usually keep an eye out at secondhand stores or we go clearance and sample shopping like example this was a sample. Most of the dresses I've bought at secondhand stores are new. They're just donated by bridal shops, last year's styles. Um, maybe somebody bought it and never wore it. They almost always have the original price tag on them. So, uh, recap, get in between the liner and the dress, and um, I usually will try it on them inside out, but because this liner is sewn in the way that it is, I couldn't do that. So you can see on my blog, thesecretisgratitude.com, type in winter ball, and uh, this dress will come, and you'll see how when I'm trying it on her, I will take a pinch, and then I'll put a pin where the pinch is so that I know how far to take it in. So you can see on the pictures there, I've got a pin on the side seams, how much I need to take it in, and then on the front seams, I just you know, measured it when it was on, or how much I needed to take it in, and then did that. Now, once you've finished doing it that way, let me get back to the inside of both of them. Once you've done that, I usually have to hand stitch this, the area where the liner and the dress meet. Oh, goodness kind of hard at video one-handed but um, so once I can get the the size right and she's tried it on then you have to hand stitch um, on the inside okay so I didn't take the liner in on this one you can see where I took the side seam in but I didn't take the liner in so the seam is off to the side of where it normally would have been and I just folded it over and then hand stitched it down so I just kind of made a pleat so that I didn't have to, I could have done just taken in the entire um, 
recliner, which I have done. It's quite easy with the machine, but because I had to unpick this to do the side seam, I didn't want to have to deal with that. If it is just stitched e like directly and there's no unpicking necessary, this one was pinned down actually on the inside, so I had to unpick it. So because of that, the reason I sewed it the way that I did with just a fold and tucked it in and, and then hand stitched it down. But um, sometimes when you fold the liner up, it's just even, and so you can just take it in all the way and then just continue and take it in the same amount on the liner. So that's handy when it's that way. But anyway, if you have any questions um, altering formal wear, just check out my blog, The Secret is Gratitude. And I also have a, a video on my blog channel, The Secret is Gratitude, where I show how to blind stitch. You can see there's no, there's just a little pickup stitch on these blind hem. And I do show on my blog, uh, and I think I have a video as well, showing how to blind stitch for a hem. And then, um, either steaming or ironing underneath a towel. So what I'll do is um, either put a damp towel over it, really, really, now when I say damp, I'm talking about nearly dry, um, and then I iron it underneath the towel so that the wrinkles can come out, or you can steam it. I've had some problems with steamers as we live in a hard water area. Sorry, I'm trying to hang this up so you can get a whole view of it. But I live in a hard water area, and so the steamers sometimes will get clogged, and then they'll spew out some little white minerals. Um, every steamer I've tried has that. You have to use distilled water all the time. Even the professional places, I've actually taken it in and had them steam it for me. So the better luck that I've had is, is using a, a towel over it to... Um, steam it with the iron. So you can see a little bit better the sample thing there. Now her jacket comes down to about here, so that's not going to show, but the lighting in here is very bright, but in an evening dark dance, nobody's going to see that, plus she's got the little bolero jacket thing that she's wearing over it. So I think we'll be okay there. Otherwise, if you have something that says sample, you can put maybe a couple of rosettes or you could stitch a little bit of a, a drape of a chiffon just from here to here and here to here so there's kind of a wisp kind of a thing going on so you don't see the sample mark. There's lots of ways you can cover up if you do decide to go cheaper and buy a sample of a dress and take it in and alter it. It's a lot cheaper. So this dress was actually just seven dollars as you, I showed you before. It started out at fifteen and ended up at seven. So for seven dollars she's got a new dress that was brand new. Winter formal ball dress that's very beautiful on her. It's very form fitting and flattering and she's very excited to wear it. So thanks for watching.